Hi guys, welcome back to the final video in this tutorial series. We're finally there, we've built the template, you guys have been, you know, toiling with contact and making sure your preferences are set up the way you want to. I know that third video was a bit of a bear, but there was so much information I needed to get to you guys, and I hope it was really clear, and you know, everything that you possibly could have wanted to find out was there. So if you've stuck around till now, congratulations, but we're so, so close to being done. Um, what I like to do is when I'm mixing orchestral music is I like to mix in stems. So what I do is I take all of my um, uh, of my woodwinds and I send them to bus one. I take all of my brass and I send them to bus two. I take all of my percussion. I think you can probably guess where they're going. Bus three. Pianos and keyboards. Bus four. And of course now, strings are going to, you guessed it, bus six. No, they're going to bus five. So guys, it's been a long night. Apologies for the bad jokes. So what this means is, is that essentially my, my stereo out doesn't have any of my mastering chain on it. What I actually use for my mastering chain, I use the same plugins on each. I use FabFilter Pro Q2. Then I use FabFilter. takes a little second to load all of that. Use FabFilter... Uh, Saturn and I might not use all of these but I, I set them up as presets the other four didn't actually load that's helpful love this feature in 10.3 where all of the um, you know most recent plugins you use are right at the top sorry I add a fab filter again pro c2 And then the last thing I add is a Pro L on each of these. And the reason I have to do it five times is because say you're getting your mix sent to a dubbing engineer or you're sending it out to a client and they say, well, we really like this, but there's unfortunately, you know, a percussion beat which just happens in the middle of an explosion, which we wanted to, you know, you know live on its own as a sound design moment. You go, you know, that's fine. But in the traditional sense, all of the music would have had to drop out of that if you'd only delivered one if you'd only delivered one stem, if you'd only delivered the music stem. But if you deliver, you know, your woodwind and your brass and your brass and your percussion, your pianos and your strings separately, they can just edit out the part of the music which wasn't working. And the likelihood is that the rest of the music won't suffer for it. So on my stereo out, all I put is a very, very, um, you know, it's unlikely this will ever be really touched, but just in case I put a linear phase EQ from Logic and a, uh, a limiter, just because it will never actually go out when I'm when I'm mixing. But what I like to do, where am I going? Dynamics, limiter, there we go. And I just put this down to minus three, de you know, minus 0 0.3 decibels. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't color the sound at all. It just means that I'm not getting any peaks out of my output, which is important uh, for me because I do uh, tend to monitor quite loudly. But yeah, so it, it, basically I, I'll actually bounce out these stems. You know, I'll bounce out the woodwinds, I'll bounce out the brass, percussion, piano, strings, and that's it. That's how I work. There's no, um, there's no, you know, problems where the compression on the drums is pumping the orchestra everything's got its own version of the same mastering chain and it means that you have a much more natural sound and also it's a different sound so if you'd run them all through at the same time it homogenizes in a different way and also of course in the editing phase and in the dubbing stage there's maximum flexibility for the dubbing engineer if he needs to take something out he can so obviously you have five stems i've said in the past that i like to use two reverbs on my on my orchestral mixes. Yes, this means we need to use two reverbs per stem. So I'm going back here and I'm sending the woodwinds to bus 10 and bus 11. It's taking a few moments. As I say, guys, this is a really taxing, um, this is a very taxing template for my PC and it is a fairly powerful Mac, but you know, I look, I will be looking into multiple computer setups in the past. It, sorry, I will be looking into multiple computer setups in the future. Um, and I will be keeping you guys appraised of that and showing how I set those up for best efficient workflows. And I'm just going to show, show you how to set up one of these reverb sends because I'm a little bit worried about my system resources. Um, 
but I'm just, you know, proof of concept. I am sending each stereo master group to two individual reverb buses. And obviously you'll see in the blog I've, you know, I've gone through and I've actually colored these nicely, but we'll just go woodwind reverb one, woodwind reverb two. And it depends. You can send these out of the stereo masters. Uh, you know, you could, you could bust these to the woodwinds, but actually I prefer to let the reverbs um, go out of the stereo, uh, this, the, the stereo out. But obviously if you solo the woodwinds, the only reverbs that are going to be coming up are the woodwind reverbs. So that's not an issue. For each of these, I do add a Pro Q2 just for filtration purposes. I really do love the Fab Filter plugins if you hadn't figured that out yet. And then I like to use one algorithmic. I bet you can bet which one it is going to be. It's the Fab Filter R. It's not as tall, guys, necessarily the best reverb for mixing cinematic. I mean, the, the, the one that's used most widely in, in the cinema world is obviously the TC6000, but it's a $16 thousand dollar hardware units but it is the one they use so if you want to make it sound like that as the spitfire guys say you gotta go buy that one but um i will be getting my hands on the lexicon native bundle soon but i do just like using the pro r from fab filter and i absolutely adore the uh convolution reverb and logic i use it on everything um it really is kind of my dark horse as it were of a plugin like it's just so simple and it works so well so yeah, um, you know, just to show you the proof of concept, I, I set up all the settings for the reverbs and then I copy them over to each um, to each reverb bus. And that's it, guys. That's all, you know, that's literally everything. Um, I haven't obviously set this up, but, um, you know, fully, but that's the kind of thing that I want you guys uh, to get in the habit of doing. It is a really good way of working and it's really simple as well. And you have the system resources for doing it if you've set up the contact libraries in the ways that I've shown you. So the last thing that's left to do, it's finally ready. You go to file, save as template, and this should feel really good, guys. So orchestral, I'll call this example. Call this whatever you want. Call this my Everest if you want it to be a literal title. And you save that, it will take a few moments. But then every single time you open up Logic, you'll be able to open up this template and start working immediately. 